Yeah. How's it going? Oh, so far so good. A lot better than yesterday. Ooh, man. <laughs> clipboard in there on the other side. Yeah, right down there. see if we can find some fish today. We're going to go look over on the mainland across from Petersburg and then we're going to go up to Admiralty Island and look in Gambier Bay and Pibus Bay see if there's any fish coming in. Uh, check and see what's coming into the streams. If there's enough to open a fishery on or if there's enough to get the returns back for the spawning fish. We start the day out as usual taxiing out of the Petersburg Seaplane Base out of the Wrangell Narrows and I'll turn and taxi down the Wrangell Narrows to the west to the south when I warm up the engine. I'm going to speed my taxi up to about four times normal there so it's down there a little quicker before I turn to make my takeoff run. And then I'm going to make my takeoff run and climb out at 1.25 times the speed which is about what it'd be at 180. We've got three big saners sitting at the drive down dock. That dock was built uh, so they could tie up to and they could drive down to it and they carry supplies down to it and stuff. So they don't have to take them in a cart down the regular ramp. Uh, that's just quite a savings for those boats. Anyway, it's a lot nicer day than what we've had, so it's a great day for flying today. I'm going to start my takeoff run here to the northeast in the Petersburg, or the Wrangell Narrows. The city of Petersburg, of course, is off on the right side with the harbor and everything there. Uh, I've got the recording speed up to 1.25, the actual speed here, so it looks a little faster than the normal Cub takeoff, more like a 180, 185 takeoff. We're going to go ahead and go out to Wrangell Narrows, and instead of turning to the right like we have been, heading south or east, we're going to turn to the north and head up to the mainland that way.
I've edited the speed up here to two times normal, so it gives us an effective ground speed of about 106, 60, 170 miles an hour instead of the usual 85 to 90. We'll get through this a little quicker. Going along the edge of Kupernoff Island here, Frederick Sound is what we're over and it's off to the right of us. Those are Sockeye Islands coming up. They're written as Sukhoi Islands on the map, but they're pronounced as Sockeye. As I said, we're over Frederick Sound right now with Kupernoff Island on the left. If you look almost straight ahead, just past the nose and past Sockeye Island there, you see a low point up there, a real low point. Actually, that's called Low Point. And that's the entrance to Thomas Bay, and that's all the mainland over there. Thomas Bay is a pretty good-sized bay. It has, it's fed by two glaciers, uh, Baird Glacier and Patterson Glacier. Baird Glacier used to come down to the salt water, but it's receded back away from it now. Anyway, that's the entrance there to Thomas Bay. There's a real narrow uh, entrance actually to the bay. The, the apparent entrance is real wide, but there's a bar there, and there's a real narrow channel that goes into the bay. Just almost exactly straight ahead of us is where we're going, and that's the Alaska mainland, and it's Point Vanderput is what we'll see when we come up on that and then Dry Bay is the bay we're going to go into to do a fish survey on. We're trying something a little different here today. I'd had this camera mounted up on the wing route just right over the main spar uh, right next to where it attaches to the fuselage and I had some pretty good videos on that, but the last two videos that I edited where we went down uh, doing a sane boat count and doing a stream survey in the Bradfield Canal, uh, they didn't turn out as well as I would have liked. I think it was a very overcast day, and I think the brightness of the paint on the wings uh, blanked out or, or fooled the camera into thinking it was brighter than it was, so all of the background, the ground and everything kind of got dark and it didn't turn out very well. Although it turned out a lot better on my other computer when I was looking at the videos on the other computer. By the time they're edited, there wasn't much detail showing in them. So I was pretty disappointed with that. So I thought I'd try something different. And here I've got the camera mounted up on the overhead uh, window uh, just behind the main carry-through spar on the plexiglass just about centered on the airplane and it's not working out very well. Uh, I'm not getting the glare off of the windshield or off of the paint that I was when I had it on the wing. Of course, it's a nice day today, and so it might not be blanking out because of that. But the plexiglass is just too flexible, and I'm getting a lot of bounce here, so I'm not getting near as good of recording as I would have liked to. So here comes Point Vanderput up uh, in the foreground here now. And again, we're going two times normal. As we get up here, I'm going to slow it down to 1.25 again when we do a stream survey. Point Vanderput here is the terminal moraine for the Baird Glacier when it came out all the way out into the salt water here. How many hundreds of years ago that was, I don't know. But this is as far as the glacier came out, and this is the terminal moraine or the gravel and everything that it pushed out as it dug out that channel behind us, uh, the bay, Thomas Bay, which is on the right. And that uh, 
terminal moraine, of course, goes right out across the open water that we were flying across, and there's just a small entryway into the big bay behind it. Although the bay gets pretty deep, it's several thousand or a thousand feet deep in places there. Now we're coming up to dry bay here now, and we'll slow the airplane back down again, or slow the recording back down again. Now you can see why it's called dry bay, because all of this area here in front of us that's green is dry. It gets flooded at a high tide, but uh, it, it's pretty much dry now. At one time it was probably a bay. The stream goes up and goes around the edge of the timber there ahead of us, uh, straight ahead of us, and then up into that valley. Well, I'm going to fly over the terminal area of the stream, or the outer area of the stream in the salt water where the moraine comes out, the delta comes out, and we're looking for fish coming in, and we actually see schools of fish coming in over the gravel bars and out in the little deeper water there. So I'm going to circle around that, and then we'll go on up into the stream, and look in the stream, and ordinarily, or earlier, what we did was we just looked in the intertidal area. We'd look out here in the salt water to see what's coming in, and then the early fish just go up in the intertidal area. And the intertidal area is a portion of the stream that is still affected by the tide that floods and recedes with the tide. And that goes up. As we come around here, you'll be able to see. You can see where the timber line is there on the grass. And the top of the timber line there, or the bottom of the timber line, is just about the... Uh, end of the intertidal area. So fish come into this stream here and school up in here into the intertidal area which gets them up out of the salt water and away from the predators in the salt water like the seals and the sea lions but then they have to contend with the birds and the bears and when they get ready then they go on up the stream and we're going to fly right up the stream today and there's actually fish in the stream quite a ways up it. Usually I'll fly up the stream and the biologist will count the fish going up the stream and then we'll fly back down the stream and give him a chance to count them again going down the stream and then he can average out what his counts are and get a pretty accurate count of what the fish are in the stream. But the sun is coming right straight down on us right now. We're pointed into it so going down the stream the sun would be reflecting off the water pretty bad and you wouldn't be able to see anything in there in the shadows and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut across this ridge back over into Frederick Sound and then we'll turn back to the northwest and parallel the beach out about 100 yards offshore, about 800 to 1,000 feet, and look for fish moving along the shoreline. Once I get straightened out back up the shoreline here, I'm going to speed the recording up to four times its regular speed. 
get by here, cover a little ground a little faster than cub speed. That's still Kupernoff Island over there on the left and the Alaska mainland here on the right. And we're still over Frederick Sound. It kind of turns here. It was going kind of north-south and now it's going more east-west, uh, kind of northeast, southwest, something like that. It's almost a 90 degree turn, but it's still big water here. You can see Kupernoff Island along the edge there on the left as far up as you can see. And then right up here, just past this little point we're coming up on now, is Farragut Bay. And the point out there, off in the distance on the right side, is Bay Point. We're going to follow this shoreline out looking for fish here for a ways. And then I'm going to dip into Cat Creek. And there's fish return into Cat Creek. And we're going to do a quick survey on that. But I'm not going to slow the airplane down for that one. That one's just going to be a quick one. We'll come out of Cat Creek and get reestablished along the shoreline here and continue on out to Cape Fanshawe. Cape Fanshawe is that point there just to the right of the nose and that kind of separates Frederick Sound from Stevens Passage. Frederick Sound goes out another 30 miles or so to the left until it gets out to Chatham Straits and Stevens Passage takes off here and goes north towards Juneau. It's about 100 miles up there to Juneau. The little islands that you see just to the right of the nose are Five Fingers. There's a lighthouse on one of the Five Fingers. It used to be manned by the Coast Guard, but it's been automated. A private organization has taken over the lighthouse, and you can get a trip out there and stay in it for a weekend or a week. And it's a really great place to go to watch the humpback whales. I've seen as many as 300 humpback whales in this area that you can just see inside the view screen here right now and around the island. They're almost always laying out there. You can see them breaching, doing bubble feeding, all kinds of things. So straight ahead of us, uh, the taller mountains there is Admiralty Island. The little low ones right over the nose are Brothers Islands. And that's where we're headed for now. So I'm going to cut this video off here now. I was going to try to make a video of the whole trip out of this, 
what I would have had to speed everything up to 32 times or 64 times speed and stuff and I don't really like the way that turns out so I'm going to cut this video off here and then I'll go ahead and make a second video showing the rest of the trip where we do the stream surveys on Admiralty Island.